Sports Channel presents Chicago White Sox baseball, rich in tradition for over 80 years. From the Sox of the early 1900s to the Go-Go Sox of the 50s. Don't forget about the team tagged winning ugly to the 1990 team that promises excitement, competitiveness, and youth. Chicago White Sox baseball, take your place in history. From Comiskey Park in Chicago, Illinois, Sports Channel presents Chicago White Sox baseball. This afternoon, the White Sox versus the New York Yankees and the starting pitchers. For the Sox, it'll be the Little Bulldog, the Southpaw, Greg Hibbert, and for the Pinstripers, the right-hander, Andy Hawkins. And hi, everybody, and welcome to Comiskey Park. I'm Ken Harrelson, along with Tom Pachurik, as the Sox get ready to take on the Yankees in the rubber match of this three-game set as they took it on the chin last night, 10 to 7. But, Tom, also a couple of memorable things happening here today at Comiskey Park. It's the 80th birthday, and it's the last time the New York Yankees will ever play a game in old Comiskey Park. Isn't that amazing? They've played hundreds of ball games here. Hopefully, they'll go out on a losing note. Now, today's pitcher, Greg Hibbert, has been just outstanding with consistency all year long. But I think a key for Greg is to really establish that breaking ball early in the ball game. He's got the great changeup and the outstanding curveball. But the Yankees are very good against left-handed pitchers. And... His opponent today, uh, Andy Hawkins, he's been struggling. He is one in four. Yeah, he really has sc uh, scuffled as of late. Andy's a good pitcher, though. He's, they signed him as a free agent. New York liked him. He had a pretty good year for him last year, but he really hasn't gotten his act together yet this year. All right. Hibbert against Hawkins, and Tom will be back with the rest of the starting lineups right after this. Hi, I'm Paul Reese. Hope you'll join me next time on the bench when my guest will be one of baseball's best relief pitchers, the White Sox' Bobby Thigpen. Yeah! Sports Channel's coverage of Chicago White Sox baseball is brought to you in part by... Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you it makes good sense to drink responsibly. Know when to say when. By your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Toyota dealers. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By the Illinois State Lottery. Have a ball. Play the lottery. By your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chrysler Plymouth dealers, where the best is what you get. And by Midway Airlines, the airline of choice for the Chicago White Sox. We're back at Comiskey Park in Chicago. It's a perfect afternoon for baseball. And before we get to the lineups, let's look at our between the lines for this afternoon's ball game. First for the Sox, they've got to keep those three top hitters off the base. Kelly... Sacks and Mattingly, very, very dangerous, the three top hitters in their lineup. So it's very important for Hibbert to keep those guys off the sacks. Hawkins, I'll tell you, Andy Hawkins has really scuffled the first three innings of every ball game, so he's got to keep the Sox down early. He's got to get off to a good start this afternoon. And Hibbert, he's got to have that good curveball and changeup working. The Yankees are very tough against left-handed pitchers so far this season. So with that in mind, let's take a, take a look at the lineups for this afternoon's game. First for the Yankees, as given by manager the Stumper, Stump Merrill, leading off in center field, Roberto Kelly, batting second. Second baseman Steve Sachs. Don Mattingly is back at his familiar third spot playing first base. Cleanup man is the D8, Steve Balboni. Jesse Barfield's in right field hitting fifth. He's followed by the left fielder, Pirates. Mike Blowers is at third base this afternoon hitting seventh. Bob Guerin catches and hits eighth. And the ninth place hitter, shortstop Alvaro Espinoza. Pitching for the Yankees, right-hander Andy Hawkins. He's been scuffling one and four with a 6-4-9 ERA in 12 starts. And he'll be facing this Chicago White Sox lineup given by manager Jeff Torborg. Leading off in center field, Lance Johnson. Batting second, third baseman Robin Ventura. Yvonne Calderon is the DH this afternoon, hitting third. Cleanup man is left fielder Danny Pasqua. Ron Kittle returns to first base, hitting fifth. He's followed by catcher Ron Karkovice. Scotty Fletcher is the second baseman, hitting seventh. Sammy Sosa in right is the eighth place hitter. And bringing up the rear, El Capitan shortstop Ozzie Guillen. Pitching this afternoon for the Sox. Hawk 
Mike's favorite little bulldog, Greg Hibbert. Hibbert six and four with the ERA of 2.59 and 14 starts so far this season. Some more numbers: given up only 79 hits in 90 and a third innings, 25 walks and 44 strikeouts. And Greg Hibbert in his last start Monday against California, he won that game. Did another outstanding job going eight and a third innings, giving up eight hits, no runs, walking none, and striking out four. So control is a key factor for Greg Hibbert's success. Career-wise against the Yankees, he's 1-0 and with a 3.72 ERA, and that's over 19 and a third innings. The weather in Chicago, absolutely perfect for baseball. Clear blue skies, temperature at 66 degrees. Wind out of the north at 16, sunny and pleasant. Wind out of the north could be a good day for the pitchers. That wind blowing straight in from center field. The umpires today at home plate, Dale Scott. At first base, Vic Voltaggio. Mike Riley, the crew chief, is at second. And at third, Chuck Merriweather. Defensively for the Sox, in the outfield, it's Pasqua, Johnson, and Sosa. Around the horn, Ventura, Guillen, Fletcher, and Kittle. And the battery this afternoon of Greg Hibbert and Ron Karkovic. There's Hibbert. We said early in between the lines, he's got to get good command of that changeup and curveball early in the ball game because the Yankees are a much stronger team against left-handed pitching. They led the American League last year, 1989, in batting average against lefties. Look at the crowd, sun drenched out there in center field. Another good crowd on hand. So Roberto Kelly ready to start things off. So here's the Hawkster. All right, Wimpy, thank you very much. And once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 80th birthday of Comiskey Park. And the final time that you will ever see that uniform right there at Old Comiskey Park. Sox coming in with a mark of 45 and 26, one game back of the Oakland A's. The Yankees 28 and 44. They are 14 games back in the American League East in last place. But here's Kelly. He's two for seven in the series. Takes it up high. There's a strike and the count evens at one. Bunch just a little bit swung around to the left as it's outside and the count two balls and a strike. Kelly four homers 22 RBIs. Good speed. And that's off the plate and the count goes to three and one. Eighth meeting of the year between these two clubs. Sox hold a 5-2 edge. This is the sixth game played at Comiskey Park. Sox won four of the first five as you look at the stumper. Got yeah. on the inside corner. So Hibbert comes back, punches out Kelly. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Big strikeout here by Hibbert. Look at it. It's a fastball. Looks like he cut it a bit. You almost call that a slider. Running in and down. A great pitch. It really locked Roberto Kelly. There you see the last start against the Yankees was May 30th. He won. Working seven in the third inning. Giving up only four hits and two runs. Walking two, striking out three. Good pitch. Here's the second baseman, Steve Sachs, hitting at 281. A homer, 18 RBA. I RBIs. He was two for five yesterday. Takes it off the plate. You know what made that pitch look so bad to the Yankees is that Hibbert worked him away, 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 and then busted him in on the 3-2 pitch. So he really locked Kelly on that pitch. Good yeah. change. A change from Greg. Now feel straight away in bunch for Sacks. Actually, the Sacks in a more conventional defense that we have seen against any other club. Against the Yankees. Yeah. We haven't seen that nickel defense very often. No. One one pick. There's that change again. We are. Great arm speed on that particular pitch. 
That That's the thing uh, we talk about, Wimpy, you know, for all the fans sitting at home watching it, you got to watch the motion, the rhythm, and the delivery, and the arm speed on Hibbert's change. And if he's got it, you can sit back and enjoy yourself a good White Sox ball game. That's very true. You'll get a lot of ground balls to the left side of the infield when he's high. There's a curveball. Just got a piece of it. Well, prior to the game, uh, two people that attended this game, and along with two people whose birthday is on July 1st, back in 1910, Emily Joiak, Max Niedorf. That's their birthday. As that's fouled. Also, Gardner Stern and Anamia Bresch. They attended the Comiskey Park inaugural 80 years ago. Boy, they look terrific. Wow. They all threw them. Had the ceremonial first pitch. Looked great. Here's the one-two delivery from Hibbert. A pie. Zach's 30 years old and is. Tom has mentioned many times, he's a gamer. He is a keeper. He plays hard. Likes hitting off Hibbert, too, as you saw by that last graphic. Good pitch right there. Same changeup. We talk so often at Comiskey Park right here, bad hitter's background. That green just doesn't go up there high enough out in center field. And if you got a good changeup like Greg Hibbert does, it's really tough to pick up rotation on that particular pitch. So he could be very effective here in the daytime. That's into right field. Sammy fighting that win. It was just the reverse of yesterday. It was out of the south going out to right. A little scary right there. Sammy looks like he may have overrun this a bit. The ball came back just a tad. And he's going to be fighting that sun and wind all day long, but that's the guy you want out there if you're the White Sox. Here's Don Mattingly hitting a 257 five homers, 33 RBIs, and he went through the whole month of June without hitting a home run. Now that really doesn't surprise me just watching him swing the bat these two days, Chuck. <laughs> I'm telling you, he doesn't look like he's trying. You don't hit you hit home runs when you pull the ball. He's trying. He's just not <laughs> he's just not getting the job done with his strike over. <laughs> Well, I think he looks, to me, it looks like he's trying to hit the ball the opposite field. You're not going to hit a whole bunch of homers the other way. <laughs> no, not Don. He's, no. mentioned, he's not a slugger. No, he... That little comeback right to him. Over the first, and that'll do it. One, two, three, for the little bulldog, and after a half inning of play, it's the Yankees nothing, and the Sox coming to back. Yankees failed to score in the top half of the first inning, and the Sox will get their first look at Andy Hawkins. But let's first look at the monthly report for the White Sox. 10 and 6 in April, 18 and 10 in May, a fine June as well. Overall, 45 and 26. The home record, 8 over and 11 over on the road. That's really the, the great stat right there. The road record is terrific. And here's Andy Hawkins, 1 and 4 with a 6.49 ERA and 12 starts on the season. Giving up a lot of hits, 82 and 68 innings, walking quite a few, more than he has struck out. It's a telltale sign right there. That's why the ERA is up there. And defensively for the Yankees, Leavitt, Kelly, and Barfield, the outfield, Flowers, Espinosa, Saxon, Maddenley around the horn. And the bat battery today is Andy Hawkins and Bob Guerin. And I did not say that Bob... <laughs> Don Mattingly was not trying. I didn't mean it anyway. Don Mattingly is not trying to hit home runs. You That's said it. We've got it doesn't. on tape. You said it as Lance steps in. I takes the first not. pitch strike. I said he's not trying to hit home runs. Don Mattingly may be trying a little bit too hard. He tries as hard as anybody in baseball. So there. Here's the 0-1 pitch to Lance. Out of play and the count. Quickly two strikes. Lance hitting at 281, no homers, 26 RBIs. He was one for five. He is one for five in this series thus far. It's in the left field. Jim Layritz coming on, now fighting that win, and he makes. 
makes the catch. A definite win factor today. Well, that ball came back. My goodness. Mayritz, we saw him play third base in the first two games of this series, and he has to do a number right here. Fine diving catch right there just before it hit the ground. Now the wind is going to play a definite part in the outcome of this game this afternoon. Yesterday was very hot in the Chicago area. Today rather cool, and of course, that usually means north winds. Here's Robin. Robin swinging the bat well. Takes a strike from Hawkins. Robin hitting 313 in his last 112 at bats. That's fouled out of play. Left side over the Sox dugout and quickly the count 0 and 2. Andy Hawkins, from what I've seen of him, Hawk, is a high ball pitcher. He throws a lot of pitches above the belt, actually around the letters, and that is a pitch the White Sox are really going to have to take, especially on a day like today where it's going to really take a belt to hit it out of the ballpark. So if he pitches upstairs out of the strike zone, they swing at it, chances are they're going to pop it up. Outside, Bob Guerin trying to frame it in the count. One and two. He goes back on the track, and he makes a catch. Wow. Robin smoked it right to Barfield. A mm. couple of good plays to start things off for the Yankees defensively. There you see the fastball. Robin gets ahead of the bat on it. Wynn may have had brought that one back a little bit. Yesterday it would have probably been a homer. Jesse Barfield with a fine play there in right field. He got a good jump on it. That was a tough play because it was hit directly over his head. He had to take that drop step, run to a spot, and then look up and catch it, fighting the sun as well. Strike on the outside corner. And that's not Yvonne's A swing right there. had a lot of trouble in the first three innings. He's got an ERA of 8.39 over the first three innings. That's in the right field as Jesse moves over, makes a catch, and very quickly, a 1-2-3 inning for Hawkins. And after one, no score. No score, top of the second inning. And there you see in the American League, Texas at Boston, California at Cleveland. Oakland at Toronto. Tigers take on the Royals in Kansas City, Milwaukee at Seattle, and the Birds against the Twins in Minnesota. National League, Atlanta at Montreal, Houston, Philadelphia, Cincinnati at New York. Pittsburgh at San Francisco, Cubs at San Diego, and St. Louis at Los Angeles as Balboni takes a strike from the left-hander Greg Hibbert. Bye-bye hitting at 3.06.8. Check that. 217, seven homers, and 18 RBIs. Two balls and a strike. Left side, Ventura. Jesse Barfield, hitting at 257. He's three for eight in the series with a couple of ribbies. You missed it, Hawk, and our monitor back there. Kevin Seitzer just got nailed right on the KC of his helmet by Jack Morris. Hopefully he's all right. Barfield takes a strike.
slider. Ozzie way back. Long peg. Yes. Perfecto right there by Ozzie. Got jammed severely right here. And here's Ozzie making the backhand play. And you can see his right foot sliding because the grass is still a little bit wet after the ground crew waters the field. Just prior to the ball game, you see Jesse try to get that left arm through. Doesn't quite do it. And Ozzie sets, throws. Actually, it may have helped him because he didn't even step with his left foot. His right leg just slid back. That may be a new way of, innovative way of throwing the ball now. Wrong. You're right. That is wrong. <laughs> As Larrett steps in, Jimmy hit his first major league home run yesterday. That was in the third inning. And then in the ninth inning, came right back with his second major league home run. And they were big league homers, too. He got every inch of those. Ooh, big curveball. Well, I was talking with Stump Merrill after the ball game. Larry's catcher. He's a catcher. He said he will go at times behind the plate when he is as good defensively behind the plate as anybody. And that, of course, Stump has been around a long time, and that ball's hit hard. Ozzy will continue that later. One, two, three for him. Nothing across, and after an inning and a half, no score. Time now to look back at a glorious memory from Comiskey Park's historic past. For 10 glorious years, the Sox jersey displaying number three was worn by White Sox great Harold Baines. The left-handed Sox slugger from Maryland was noticed as a youth by former White Sox owner Bill Veck. Harold Baines proved to be one of the finest players ever to play for the White Sox. Harold is the all-time home run leader with 186. Well, there it goes. Deep center field. Will this be the record? Maybe. Could be. It's gone. A new home run record for the White Sox. As Harold Baines hits his 155th home run. It ties the ball game. Chicago White Sox. He is second and runs batted in with 819. Third in doubles and sixth in hits. As the Sox fans chanted Harold Harold from the stands, Harold Baines delivered. He blasted 20 or more home runs, a club record during six consecutive White Sox seasons. Harold represented the White Sox four times as an American League All-Star and twice was named the outstanding American League designated hitter 1987 and 1988. Harold Baines, a Comiskey Park legend. Danny hitting at 306, eight homers, 25 ribbies. He had one of the longer singles we have seen this year yesterday. And he hit a rocket off the top of the wall in right field. Caromed right back to Jesse. And he held him to a single. Open at Toronto, tied at one. That's in the top of the third inning. California at Cleveland, tied at two. Bottom of the second. Check it, bottom of the fifth. All speed pitch, pass for way out in front. And it's one and two. But Danny's done against his former mates. Two strikes. Well, congratulations to that gentleman right there on such a terrific season. Bill Jackson, coach of the Bulls. Wow, what a great year. A lot of thrills they gave all of us here in Chicago. We'll get them next year. Hey, they had a pretty good draft, weren't they? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good change. Right there, there is a good change up by Andy Hawkins. He didn't have that the first time around. First time he pitched against the Sox, and this is an outstanding change of good arm action right here. You see him just turning it over slightly, and the ball actually goes straight down. 
That's a different looking Hawkins than we saw the first time. Yes. Whoa, he was basically a fastball slider pitcher with not overpowering stuff with either one of those pitches, and they both look the same speed. Here's Kitty. Of course, Kitty's homer won the opener, one to nothing. That pitch up high. We're talking with Steve Shanewall, marketing director of the Bulls yesterday, and Stevie was saying that foreign player, what's his name? They drafted yeah. Tulick there. Tulick, I yeah, yeah. Tulick. Six ten shooting guard. Great. That's awesome. Ooh. <laughs> if they can't get him up for this year though, can they? No. Well, the thing is, you know, when you and I were coming up, if you were 6'10", you couldn't even hardly walk in a straight line. That's true. These guys today are just, it's not so much that they're getting bigger, bigger, it's just the bigger guys are getting more agile and better. Sure. Wow. Uh, Ooh, that, hurt. that hurt. Got him on the left forearm. Here. Let's check it out again. So he puts that right arm hand behind him to protect it. But ooh, the left hand. Yeah, right there, right in that elbow where that bicep comes in, yellow, yeah, forearm, that area. Ooh. So the count, two balls, two strikes to the big man from Gary. Just watching the signs of Garen right here. Indeed, Hawkins threw a lot of breaking pitches in the first outing against the Sox. And Garen's been putting the, the slider down in the curveball, and Hawkins been shaking him off. He wants yeah. to throw the fastball. So that's yeah. an indication that he has confidence in it and he feels good. Yeah, he looks like he's got a little bit more zip on it. And now upstairs, you really can't chase it. As we said earlier, he's a high ball pitcher. He gets a lot of outs that way. Like it's, well, that's fastball away, doesn't it? Yeah, he gave him a change, and Hawkins just looked at him as he strikes him out on the fastball. That's one reason I really enjoy watching the signs of the, of the catcher, you know, early in the ball game, especially because of the fact you can get an indication when he's putting down numbers, you can get an indication of how the pitcher feels. If, in fact, he's shaking, if the guy's putting down fastballs, he's going to the breaking ball, it tells you he doesn't have a whole bunch of confidence in his fastball, and vice versa. Sure. Here's Kark hitting a 278, three homers, seven RBIs. Now here's a breaking ball. Kark goes through the heater and the count one and one. Fastball, threaded the needle. Tarko's been playing great in his last three starts. Hit 417. That's five for 12. Two home runs from that time. Look out! Whoa! Kieran thinks the ball hit his bat. Dale Scott says no. Look at this. Hmm. Himself right there as Alvaro Espinosa fighting the sun makes the catch and that'll retire the side. So both pitchers have retired the side in order in the first two innings. And after two, no score. All of us here at Sports Channel would like to welcome our affiliate Jones Intercable and their subscribers in Lake Zurich, Illinois. Lake Zurich, yes. Mike Blowers, the third baseman. It'll be Blowers, Garen, and Espinosa as Greg Hibbert has retired the first six Yankees in order. You see the numbers on Michael. 
another one of the Yankee rookies. They have four on this ball club, and as you mentioned yesterday, I think that's the first time I ever can recall four rookies on a Yankee ball club. Yeah, more often than not, you'd have one at the max. They don't like to go with the, with the youth. They like that experience over there in New York, but it really hadn't paid off for them recently. So now the youth movement. There are some funny things that have happened in baseball in the past couple of seasons. And when I say that, unusual things. We saw a club assembled this year with the highest payroll in baseball where a lot of people were picking to win the American League West. The Kansas City Royal, with a $23 million payroll. And last year we saw a Baltimore Oriole team relatively lower down in the pay scale carry their season down to the last two days of the year before Toronto beat them out. And this year we're seeing the 1990 Chicago White Sox with a young the youngest team in the major leagues and they are battling it out for first place against the high priced Oakland A's. So some unusual things happen. That's Ozzie to Hopper. Very unusual. You got to mention the word hungry. Who's hungriest for that title? Well, you know, when you're talking about the Sox being a low price ball club as far as salaries go, it just goes to show that there are some good decisions being made at management level. And all of a sudden you can have, because from a business standpoint, that's the optimum. Sure. Right? The optimum would be what? To have the lowest paid club with the best record in baseball. Now that yeah. is the optimum. And the Sox two days ago had that. Yeah, that's amazing. It, oh, both lowest pay plus and the best record. Of course. Sports Channel presents Chicago White Sox baseball, rich in tradition for over 80 years. From the Sox of the early 1900s to the go-go Sox of the 50s. Don't forget about the team tagged winning ugly to the 1990 team that promises excitement, competitiveness, and youth. Chicago White Sox baseball, take your place in history. From Comiskey Park in Chicago, Illinois, Sports Channel presents Chicago White Sox baseball. This afternoon, the White Sox versus the New York Yankees and the starting pitchers. For the Sox, it'll be the Little Bulldog, the Southpaw, Greg Hibbert, and for the Pinstripers, the right-hander, Andy Hawkins. And hi, everybody, and welcome to Comiskey Park. I'm Ken Harrelson. Along this year, I'll tell you, they have been consistent. They have been consistent. The manager and the coaches, the players come to the park every day. They know what their role is. They know what they're going to do. And that's, boy, that's the best thing you can give a ball player. Ball strike. Yeah. Well, the one thing that I've noticed about Jeff and the, and the coaching staff that I absolutely love is when a player messes up, they get to him immediately. As soon as that half inning is over with, they tell him what they did wrong and uh, tell him, hey, don't do it again. There's strike two. And it really works. I've I seen like managers that. never just let the whole thing blow over, even with the veteran team and uh, and never even pointed out, never even pointed out the next day, and that doesn't work. A lot of those managers that you've seen work. do that are scared. Are yeah. Of the players. And that's just, during the course of the season, they will continue to make that same mistake. White Sox players don't make the same mistake, uh, you know, very often, twice. Except on the base pen. Well. <laughs> <laughs> They are a running bunch of Jessies once they get on first base. Uh-huh. Got to get the lasso out to stop them, but it's worked. Broken bat, Ventura. Two gone. That's a nice, well, Greg Hibbert. Tell you how effective he has been so far, retiring the first eight. He has one strikeout, one flyout. Seven ground balls. And six of them have been to the left side of the infield. So when you see that, you know that Greg Hibbert's having a good day because they're trying to pull that off-speed pitch. Plus the fact that he, is, he was 3-0 and on Garrett. I like it. He came back. He was 3-1 and one on Kelly. He came back and struck him out. Left side. Thank you. 
Ventura. That's nine in a row for Hibbert. Nothing across, and after two and a half, no score. Stay tuned for more hot summertime fun in August on Sports Channel. The last season ever at Comiskey Park is winding down, and the White Sox are gearing up for the pennant race against the likes of Milwaukee, Kansas City, Texas, Toronto, Oakland, California, and Minnesota. Follow today's hottest tennis players at the oldest professional tennis tournament in the country. It's the U.S. Pro Tennis Championships, and you won't miss a single serve, volley, or forehand as the top players compete in this prestigious event. Football fans won't miss a beat with Sports Channel's exclusive coverage of the Canadian Football League. It's a unique brand of football with a longer field and less downs, sure to keep the game moving. Plus, don't miss the 1990 Chicago Baseball Cancer Charities Golf Special, an encore presentation of the Chicago Bulls 3-on-3 Shoot the Bulls Special, Intercollegiate Rowing Championships, NASCAR Racing, and much, much more on Sports Channel in August. Yes. They spelled it right, too. It's great, isn't it? No score, bottom of the third. On the 80th birthday of Comiskey Park, it'll be Fletcher, Sosa, and Ozzy to face the right-hander. Andy Hawkins. Nary side has had nary hit and nary base runner. That's in the right field. It's an interesting comp Oh, you got something to say there, Hawk? Go yeah, ahead. How about you, as a matter of fact? You can get oh, the inside well, scoop on Chicago's boys of summer. Tomorrow at 6.30 on White Sox Weekly with my partner, Whippy. You'll see highlights from the Sox sweep over the Angels in Anaheim to put them on the top of the AL West. Also, Sox skipper Jeff Coborg begins a series of proper catching techniques. And don't miss White Sox Weekly for this and more tomorrow at 6.30 on Sports Channel. And also, Jeff will be modeling the new Sox uniforms for 1991. And it's White Sox Weekly tomorrow, 6.30, with Tom Petroy, Jeff Torborg, right here on Sports Channel. Sammy takes the breaking ball strike. A little slurve there. I haven't seen the new uniforms, have you? No, I heard it, Gordon. No. They'll be nice. Make sure your first look tomorrow night. Last ball on his way. Got it on the fist of Sammy. And quickly the count 0 and 2. What I started to say earlier, though, Hawk, an interesting comparison between the two pitchers. Greg Hibbert, obviously a low ball pitcher, has been getting nothing but ground ball outs. He has the one strikeout, one fly out by Steve Sachs. Last seven guys have been retired on ground balls to the left side of the infield. And on the other hand, Andy Hawkins, get to that in a second. There's a fastball up and away. He has two strikeouts, and everybody else has been retired in the air by fly balls. Nothing hit really hard except for Ventura, so he's a high ball pitcher. That fastball foul back. Count remains one and two. Fly ball pitcher against a ground ball pitcher. The ground ball pitcher right here, Hibbert, is doing much better. ERA is pitching a lot more innings, giving up less hits, and look at so many more innings pitched. Leads and walks. They're, neither one of them is a strikeout pitcher. Look at the opponent's batting average. 300 against Hawkins, only 231 against Greg. Breaking ball looped out in the short right field. Here comes Jesse. Ooh, I thought it was going to flip in there. Another fly ball out for Hawkins. He is a fly ball pitcher. Toronto has just taken a 2-1 lead over Oakland in the bottom of the fifth inning. A triple by Manny Lee. Scored Pat Border. Situation one in, man on third, and nobody out. Yes. Come on, you bluebirds. <laughs> Here's Ozzy. Ozzy 0 for 7 in the first two games. seeing a different Andy Hawkins. He has a lot of confidence in that number one. He, and what they'll tell you is besides velocity, he has a lot of confidence on his location. Yeah, if 
by far the best stuff that I've seen him have since he's been in the American League. We're only in the third inning, but you can see a remarkable difference. Whoa. Last three starts, he's been tough. 275 ERA, but no decisions. He had no decisions in the month of June. outside. Yeah. Ball tailed away, went yeah. down a bit. Turned it over on him. Mm-hmm. He's got a few more pitches, looks like, to work with. Last time we saw him, he was through a cut fastball and a slider. That was it. That's hard. He had a right two. Alvaro Espinosa. And that'll it for the Sox. Another one, two, three inning. That's three in a row for Hopkins. And after three, no score. Fans, we don't sit on our hands. We make the loudest noise in Chicago town. We raise the roof right up, and the sound comes down. We are the six man. Coming this summer, Budweiser presents... We are the Bulls fans. The Shoot the Bull 3-on-3 three -three Classic. There are divisions for all ages and levels of ability. Call 943-5800 for details, or... We are the six man. Check the Chicago Tribune. We are the Bulls fans. Here's a reminder that White Sox games are always in more enjoyable with a group of friends or colleagues. For more information on single-game Sky Suites, special group rates on picnic and patio parties, call the White Sox group sales office at 312-924-1000. And there are suites still available for this homestand against Detroit and Baltimore. So come out and see the Sox and enjoy it from one of those great Sky Suites. Roberto Kelly hits the first pitch to Ozzy. Yeah. Ozzy has been a busy camper out there. That's one, two, three. Ground ball out score. Pretty routine for the Ozzaru. Tell you what, Greg Hibbert's really got an advantage, don't you think, Hawk, having those two guys on the left side of the infield when you know he's going to face a lot of right-handed hitters and they're going to inadvertently try and pull them. They won't be effective doing it, but Ozzy and Robin Ventura on that left side of the infield have just been terrific. I think it's the toughest side, left side of the infield in the American League. Don't know about the National League, but in the American League, in my opinion, that's the toughest side to get a ball through. Right here, with Ventura and Ozzy. Mm -hmm. And with Greg Hibbert, of course, taking advantage of that being a low ball pitcher. He appreciates it as much as anyone. I would say the next toughest would be Fernandez and Gruber. Yeah. I don't think Kelly has as much range at third as, as Robin, and for that reason, that's the reason I think that ours is a little stronger, mm -hmm. a little tougher to get it through. Sure. Two balls, no strikes to Sacks. Fly to right. Can't think of anybody else. No, there's not. In that league. Not in this league. That's a broken bat right side. That's good. <laughs> I mean, let me finish that stick. Good pitching. <laughs> Steve Sachs trying to go the other way, but it's nubs it off the end of the bat. So he's over two. Well, our boy Junior Felix came through with a single to score Manny Lee. So the Blue Jays, two runs in, man on first, one out as they lead the A's three to one. Bottom of the fifth. All right. Donnie on a little half swing hit a comebacker to Hibbert his first trip. Curveball off the end of the bat, right side. Yes. Twelve in a row. Retired by Hibbert, and after three and a half, no score. I've always loved watching baseball. Nothing beats an ice-cold Coke at Comiskey Park. But being from a family of centers, I was never too good at playing baseball. You could get hurt trying to catch a curve this way. Kids, get White Sox baseball cards at the July 29th Sox Brewers game and hear the Sox on all new 67. The last season in historic Comiskey Park. Years from now, you'll say you were there. There's one of the original Crimson Fannies right there. 
Yep. You never did that, did you? Never. Good. Here's Lance. He popped up to left field. That would ruin all the wonderful things I think about you. Outfield short. Swung around to the left. Takes it up high. in the bottom of the fourth inning. And nobody has reached base yet. Mercy. Pretty unusual. Both pitchers are in a pretty good groove, though. No doubt about it. They're both working very quickly. They're getting it and throwing it. They both have a good routine. Yes, very much so. They're not thinking a whole lot. Don't give the hitters a whole lot of time either. And plus, their defense has been very good, too. They're on their toes. Sacks. Oh, you'll see some sparkling defensive plays from that guy out there on the mound. He is working quickly as you look at Melito's brother. Reports on him, uh, first few times that he pitched for the Yankees this year, he was outstanding. Unfortunately for him and the Yanks, injured his arm, and they don't know when he's coming back. Here's Robin. Takes the fastball strike. Robin hit a rocket out to right field at Barfield, made a nice play going away from home plate on. There's another hard hitter right to center. Quickly two out. Jeez. All right, uh, Yvonne's going to break it up right here. Good call. Good call, good call. Now, the last time he came up, Hawkins showing a lot of confidence in that fastball, throwing three straight fastballs. Three fastballs away, too. Yeah, let's see how they can try to work in here. Change some sort of breaking ball. Up the middle, Espinoza. One, two, three inning for Hawkins. Half to four, no score. That's the story, top of the fifth inning, and a reminder, Milk Duds and Jolly Rancher Candies offer kids a chance to become a celebrity bad boy or girl. You receive great prizes and the chance to go down on the field here at Comiskey Park to meet Sox players. And today's winners are Jaime Baum and Lucas Nikan. Here's Bye Bye. Bounced out to Ventura his first trip, takes a fastball off the plate. Who are those guys again? Balboni. <laughs> was high in the count, 2-0. Oh. <laughs> yep, you're right. Thank you. There's the strike. And the count, 2-1. and one. Beauty. Give him a good arm action. He did. Pops him up. Ventura. On a good change from Hibbert. Thirteen in a row. Retired by Greg. And here comes Barfield. He's really fooling, fooling those Yankee hitters with that outstanding arm action on the changeup. Sometimes it's not in the greatest of location, but the arm speed is so good and the change of speeds, it's just excellent. Boy, that's a good call right there, Wimp, because even if you do, as you mentioned, make a mistake in location, if you've got that good arm action like Hibbert has had thus far, you can get by with some mistakes. Sure. And that changeup makes that fastball look a little bit quicker, too. About a foot and a half. Oh, yeah. Here that comes that give him a good arm action, did he? That's it. Get foul. Going foul. Great play. My goodness. Bare hand. Our fans just <laughs> shine. They are outstanding. <laughs> this guy will not be denied. Get some high fives. You deserve them, buddy. I don't like
like that hat he's wearing, though. No, but look at these hands. Huh, piece of cake. Wind swirling around home plate. Good spot right here. Just misses the outside corner and the count two and one. Oh, there's a bright colored shirt out there behind the background. Barfield's had a couple of instances in this series thus far where he has had a problem with somebody moving around back there. Watch out. That fastball completely fooling. Jesse was sitting on that local right there and got the express. Yeah, he did. He was way late. You can heat him up right here. You got two options the way Hibbert's been throwing. Heat him up and inside a little bit, or give him that real good motion with the change. There are two options right here. Let's see what Clark wants to go with. Well, he got him out inside last time with a hard slider in on the hands. He broke his bat. I don't know. That's the whole thing. Here that was like change. change, yeah. Yes. yes. There's that good change. And as we keep pointing out, it wasn't in a good location. The pitch was up and away. But he had Jesse completely fooled by the arm action. The speed of the pitch is of maximum importance right here, especially when you set him up with the fastball on the previous pitches. Actually, he missed that pitch with the end of his bat. Had he made contact, it would have been a number off the end. to Ozzie his first trip. Jimmy, just 26 years old, we were talking about him earlier that Stump Merrill says that he's just not durable behind the plate, but when he is back there, that he's as good as anybody. He said if he plays three or four or five days in a row, he has a tendency to get hurt. And again, it's just an illustration and, and a compliment to a guy like Carlton Fisk, who has played all these years. Is that's hit in the left field? That's playable. Pascal. That is 15 in a row retired by Hibbert. They will go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Scoreless. I've always loved watching baseball. Nothing beats an ice-cold Coke at Comiskey Park. But being from a family of centers, I was never too good at playing baseball. You could get hurt trying to catch a curve this way. Kids, get White Sox baseball cards at the July 29th Sox Brewers game. And hear the Sox on all new 67. The last season in historic Comiskey Park. Years from now, you'll say you were there. This copyright program is presented by the Authority of Major League Baseball and the Chicago White Sox. It is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written permission of Major League Baseball, the Chicago White Sox and Sports Channel Chicago is strictly prohibited. You know what I mean? Okay. It's the bottom of the fifth inning. Pasqua, Kittle, and Karkovice. And how long has it been? A little trivia question for you. How long has it been since you've seen a game halfway finished? And Nary, a base runner. Never. I don't think I have. I'll tell you. There has yet to be a base runner in this ball game. Both pitchers, Hibbert and Hawkins, have been perfect. Greg threw five, and, here, and Hawkins threw four. I don't ever recall. Play four and a half no. innings and not a base runner? I've seen some great pitchers' duels over the years, but my goodness, I don't ever remember nobody ever getting on base. Well, I mean, uh, 
it's very, very possible it could have happened. Oh, you sure. Know, but I don't recall it. See, Hawkins wants that. He wants to throw that fastball. Inside, too. Jammed it. Flowers will not be able to get there. Well, Hawkins being a high ball pitcher is a better matchup against the White Sox because you have to say that the Sox are a low ball hitting team. Blowing away hitting team. Yep. Is that unbelievable? Yeah. That's unbelievable. You got a major league team that's a good low and away hitting team. Where the power is. Staying inside here. Nope. to throw that fastball again. Garen trying to get him to throw the change. And there's the high heat as Tom talked about. He's got much more velocity than this afternoon than he did at Yankee Stadium when we first saw him pitch. There it is, up and away. Danny Pasco wants that pitch down a bit. Jam wow. again. That's jamage right there. He didn't even hit it high enough for the catcher to get over there and catch it. Garen didn't pick it up real quick. He thought the ball was out of play and then tried it. But you're right. He still couldn't have made the catch. Oh, he's living inside on Pasqua. Well, you can see it coming as far as Hawkins. You know, as we mentioned back in the second inning, when, he had, when Garen was putting down the three and the two and the change, and he wanted that number one. Boy, that'll tell yeah. you a lot about a guy, how he feels that day. He obviously believes in that fastball this afternoon, no doubt about it. Well, Mark Connors is the bullpen coach over here. And I think one of the more astute pitching minds in the American League. And that's popped up left side. Jimmy Lafritz fighting that win. Makes Whoa. the catch. And of course, Mark Connors, Billy Connors is a pitching coach, but I'm sure they confer. Mark Connors is a real great believer in the fastball. And you show me a guy who's really a great believer in the fastball. It's like Gabby Hartman. I was fortunate enough to be on the team that he was a coach on when I was a rookie in Kansas City as Kitty steps in. He says, in his opinion, Gabby's opinion, the secret to being a good catcher was taking a guy's second best pitch and making it an out pitch. If you could take his second best pitch and make it an out pitch, then you're doing your job as a catcher. Now, what he's saying by that is you're, you're taking a guy's best pitch because it's hard to get by on one. And you're giving him two alternatives. There's a breaking ball, one of the few he's thrown. And the count one and one. Well, another thing that he has changed, changing speeds a lot better. He was pretty much one speed. He's throwing hard fastball, hard slide, and they really weren't that hard. Now he's got to throw somewhat of a slurve and a changeup this afternoon. Jammed him with an inside fastball. Blowers coming back. Yep. From a hitting standpoint, might be this game is going a little too quick. Yeah, it is. You know, from a hitting standpoint, if I were playing in a game like this, I'd just take all the time when I went up to the plate. I'd get try to get Hawkins out of that rhythm and that routine he's in. Yeah, he's in that quick rhythm. He wants he's getting the ball and he's throwing it, much like Greg Hibbert. They're both working very quickly, and their defensive team obviously very sharp also, but they haven't had to make any great plays yet. Got that fastball by him. Aside from the play that actually Barfield made on Ventura. How many balls have been hit hard in this game? That was probably it. Ventura's hit too hard. One he scalded, the other was hit semi-hard. Barfield hit uh, hit the ball fairly hard. First time up in the hole. Ooh. Ooh. Breaking ball. Like it was a strike. Clark will take it. And the count two and one. <laughs> they all got say, okay, I blew it, let's go. <laughs> Garen's telling him all about it, too. And he, and he get, yeah, right. Payback. <laughs> Whoa. My goodness. There's more gas. Look at Garen setting up. I mean, he's setting up in the left-handed batter's box. And the umpire is staying right there. 
Actually, Dale Scott, when Garen moves way out, when he wants that pitch way outside, he's staying right where he is, so he's pretty much blocked out of the outside corner. We're seeing a nice, a nice thing here as far as the art of pitching and catching. Today. We're seeing two batteries that are really in sync together. They're working as a tandem. That's inside. Ball four. That's the first base runner of the ball game with two out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And the Yankees don't like it. That, that was a fastball. It really came riding in on Karkovice. Let's take a look at it. That ball's running in, running inside, in and off the plate. You're saying if you were umpiring, you'd call that a strike? I would run it up. Yeah, well, I mean, you can't give him a couple inches on the inside, give him three inches inside after giving him three inches on the outside. Well, how big is that plate now? I, they've got something good going out there today. I'd have rung him up. <laughs> Here's Fletcher. You and Ed Rungy. <laughs> that ball gets away from Garen. Here goes Cart. Look at the effort by Bob Garen. Mercy, what a good effort. It'll be a pass ball. What an effort he gave. Yep, look at this pitch. It's a fastball. He just misses it. Just misses it. And Karkovice, take your hat off to Karko, too. He got a good jump and made it to second base. There are some guys in this league that would have not budged off of first. Not our guys. No. No, not, not this team. No, they would probably tried for third on that. <laughs> Some of them. Come on, Scotty, pick him Ooh, up. Ooh, good swing. One and one to count. Broken bat single, Scotty. Come on, Scooter. You can do it. <laughs> That's what players say to themselves on the bench <laughs> in a situation like this. Come on, blip one over a second, Scooter. Oh, there's that inside fastball. Two and one to count. He's hitting 476. He's 10 for 21 against the Yankees this season with a homer and four RBIs. He's seven for his last 16. Three hits yesterday. Coming alive. for the first time this afternoon. 
And good job by Scotty Fletcher. He's sitting on fastball, and he didn't swing at the breaking ball. Didn't get himself out. So runners at first and second. Now for Sammy. Sammy he eight for his last 23. Key for Sammy is to lay off that high fastball with Hawkins. He's had his biggest problems with that pitch. The fastball up and away. Make it come down. You hit it up the middle and get that base hit. second. Fletcher at first. Lays off the high gas. And the count evens at one. When the day comes at that young man right there, 21-year-old Sammy Sosa, his time is the spouse so often learns how to lay off the high fastball up out of the strike zone. You're going to see one heck of an offensive player. Two and one. All right. He's got to come down to you sooner or later, Sammy. Be ready to pull that trigger. Hawkins knows he wants to pitch Sammy upstairs. top of the six. Here's a reminder, the White Sox are offering fans a unique opportunity to go back in time and experience a game at Comiskey Park in 1917. Briars Ice Cream's Turn Back the Clock Day will take place Wednesday, July 17th, when the Sox take on the Brewers at 135. White Sox will wear 1917 replica uniforms. General admission seats will be 50 cents, and all other tickets half price. You can't beat that deal. Call Ticketmaster at 312-559-1212. Look at Hibbert, 59 pitches, 37 strikes. Left side, Ventura. <laughs> 16 in a row, retired. Here's a catch of Bob Guerin. He also bounced out to Ventura. Then four ground balls to Robin. Four to Ozzie. Two balls hit out of the infield. Good change. Excellent. deep enough. That was danger zone right there. And the count 0-2. That's a hanger. Jeff Torborg happy to see that ball hit straight back. So it's two strikes. So was Hibbert. Yeah. Tell you what, you can get away with a lot of hanging pitches today. That ball Sammy Sosa, that's a upper tank shot yesterday. Ventura backs up. That's a tough play for Robin. It's going to be a base hit for Bob Guerin. 
The play certainly Robin could have made, but it would have been a very difficult play. Made a tough one right here. Watch the top spin. It's an 0-2 curveball. Pretty good. I'll tell you what, the ball went down. He probably could have wasted it a little bit better than that. Boy, that ball had some bodacious top spin. Look at it. It just kind of eats Robin up right there. The only way he had had a chance at that one, if he'd have been able to charge it just a bit, get it on the short hop. Get that in-between hop. Those are tough. Those are the ones that eat you up. I don't think that was that was an either or situation. I don't think in this particular scenario that, that's a base hit. Something wrong with Bob Guerin down there. I don't know. I think I might have, Robin, as I said, it would have been a tough play for him to make. But with a no hitter going, I think I'd have given him an arrow. I agree. Of course, the way things go today, you know, there was a did you see the error on the replay that Cal Ripken Jr. made? No. Did they recall? It was an error. It was an error. And evidently, the uh, Cal Ripken Sr., Frank Robinson, all the guys with the Baltimore Club put so much heat on the official scorer that after reviewing the tapes again, he changed it <laughs> around. But it was it was just a flat error. Huh. Took his eye off the ball. The ball hit him on the side of the glove, bounced away. The runner advanced. That's an error. Sure. As Espinosa steps in. So we'll see how Hibbert reacts working from the stretch. First hit of the ball game right there. And Ozzy with a stop now tries to make the play with the glove. What an excellent effort. And there's a base Whoa. hit. On a hit and run. So two infield singles by the Yankees here in the sixth inning. Have Hibbert in the jam. There you see it is hit and run. Espinosa handles the bat very well. Ozzy coming across. Just couldn't make it. He tries to flip it with his glove. That's the kind of presence on the field Ozzy has. He knows he can't get up and throw anybody out. He tries to flip it behind him. Can't make the play. So Roberto Kelly, very dangerous hitter. Two runners on and only one out here in the sixth inning. Low off the plate and the count one and zero. Good fastball by Hibbert. with runners in scoring position hitting 259. No homers, 16 RBIs. There's that good change. Good motion from Hibbert. And he's on top of ball and two strikes. There's that change again. Kelly trying to stay back on it. As the on deck hitter, second baseman Steve Sachs. Jammed and ate him up. Infield fly rule in effect as Kittle makes the catch, and that's out number two. with that pitch with that good change up down and away. So there's two out. Steve Sachs, ever a dangerous out, is the hitter now. Sachse, runners in scoring position. He's hitting 255. Well, I agree with you here in respect. Certainly if you need a long ball, he's not the most fearsome hitter in this lineup, but in a situation such as this, indeed he is a tough out. Yeah. About it. If the ball's hitting the left or right, Sox have a good opportunity if it's a line drive to make a play on Guerin, who doesn't have a whole bunch of speed, even with a two out situation. Yeah, they shorten up. 
a few steps than they would normally because of the wind factor. Sammy very short in right field. And that is Sack's best stroke. Line drive to right. See him do that a hundred times during the season. There you see that defense. They're straight away and fairly short. Pasco playing a little deeper in the left field. Good fastball strike and the count evens at one. is not long enough as you can see he misses it July 30th on American Movie Classics. You're Norma Desmond. Used to be in silent pictures. Used to be big. I am big. It's the picture that got small. The legendary Gloria Swanson gives her most memorable performance in the fascinating portrait of a dream world turned to nightmare. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. William Holden co-stars in director Billy Wilder's Oscar-winning classic, Sunset Boulevard. Monday, July 30th, 8 Central on AMC. score bottom of the sixth inning as you're looking at second baseman Steve Sachs when he was called out by home plate umpire Dale Scott he momentarily lost it he was livid let's take a look at the fastball on a 2-2 count he thought the pitch was outside it was very close and watch it there was no vulgarity involved face to face with Scott <laughs> exactly what I was gonna <laughs> say yeah that's right well here we go hey you know Hawkins is still working on that no hitter every, every time, time you say that boy you're right every time you say <laughs> it <laughs> here's Ozzy Ozzy 0 for 1 no runs on two hits for the Yankees no runs on no hits for the Sox you know the other night I went home and I was watching the uh, Valenzuela All right. and Cincinnati game. I watched, you know, I watched it for two innings there. I was having a sandwich. That's into left field, right? Jimmy Leritz, one gone. So I was watching it. The score was, what, three to nothing at the time or something. It was like the sixth and seventh things or seventh and eighth. They didn't say one thing about the no-hitter. No kidding. I tried, you know what I did? I thought the game was over, so I switched, switched channels to watch a movie. The next morning I wake up and here he pitches a no-hitter. I couldn't believe it. Wow. I mean, that's carrying a little too far to the viewer. Sure. Here's Lance. Lance has popped a second. He's bounced. Has popped to left and he's bounced a second. 
And a reminder, the next Shy Sox Coca-Cola Luncheon will take place on Tuesday, July 24th at the Hilton Inn of Oak Lawn starting at 11.30 a.m. That luncheon will feature Jeff Talborg and Ron Kittle and is co-sponsored by the Chicago Sun-Times. So for more information, just call the Sox at 312-924-1000. Here comes the base hit. Lance Johnson's a high ball hitter. Andy Hawkins, a high ball pitcher. That's the equation. Here's the solution. Oh. Sax gets a nice Butterfield bounce. All right. Robin Ventura. <laughs> I'm going to stay with Yvonne. I'm going to say Yvonne is going to break it up. Well, let's get Robin on base, and he can maybe hit one out of here. Yes. Sammy Sosa came closest. Oh, he drilled that ball for the last out of last inning. Should have, could have been a three-run homer, but no. The win. Robin line deep to right his first trip. And then he bounced, bounced hard to second, in his second at bat. Two strikes. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Swung around to the left. One hopper right to Mattingly. He'll end the hand it over to Hawkins, and that'll retire the side. Nothing across, and after six, boy, what a pitching matchup this afternoon. No score. The 1980s and the Chicago White Sox. From the storybook season in 1983 to the end of the decade at historic Comiskey Park, the Chicago White Sox are a team of constant change and excitement. Take a look back at your favorite year with the White Sox by choosing one of seven videotapes or by getting the whole collection. Remember when the White Sox won the American League West by a record 20 games? Or Carlton Fisk's 2000th hit? Or Tom Seaver's 300th career victory achieved in a Sox uniform? Don't miss this entertaining look back at the Chicago White Sox. Order your favorite year with the White Sox for only $19.95 plus $2.50 shipping and handling. Catch the memories on tape. To order, send check or money order to Sports Channel Chicago. White Sox highlight tape, P.O. Box 506, Oak Park, Illinois, 60303. Be sure to specify which year or years you would like to ensure quick delivery. As you look at right-hander Andy Hawkins, we've been watching him a little bit. In between the inning here, nobody saying a word to him. And of course, usually when a pitcher has got a no-hitter going late in the ball game, like Andy does, everybody will sit in more or less the same spot on that dugout, on the bench. Nobody will talk about it. But right here, Mattingly steps in to face Greg Hibbert, who has given up but two hits. Two infield singles last inning. Strike on the outside corner, and the count evens at one. No runs, two hits, no errors for the Yankees. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Sox. Two and one to count. Second baseman, Scotty Fletcher will suck it up. Seaver's Dennis Amenis, isn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what he does to Phil Rizzuto daily shouldn't be done. 
You're a child elderly receiver. statesman. <laughs> <laughs> All of fame right-hander, now one of the Yankee broadcasters, says bye-bye, steps in. <laughs> That's cute. Yes, he yep. did, says first base in fire, Lou Voltaggio. You know, you could already see the Daryl Evans influence on these hitters. Balboni used to hit with a closed stance. Now he's open right on top of the plate. That's the way Daryl Evans used to hit. What did that thing say? If, if behinds were airplanes, the world would be an airport? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> behinds were, could fly. No, it's this right. place would be an airport. <laughs> Here's the two pitch. Slider inside. I liked one also he said before the game, what's the difference between a terrorist and a wife? <laughs> you can negotiate with a terrorist. <laughs> oh, he broke his bat, sawed him off. Well, he did that, new lumber. <laughs> yep. Bye-bye, I'll get a new one. And a reminder, the Coca-Cola Shy Sox Fan Club is open to Sox fans of all ages. Members receive tickets, Comiskey Columns newsletter, and much more. Plus, the proceeds benefit the Shy Sox Research Fund and Day Hospital in the fight against terminal illness in children. For more information, call the White Sox at 312-924-1000 or stop by your neighborhood Walgreens for an application. The ball and two strikes to Steve Balboni. Fastball off the plate. Gas him up and in. Fastball, yes. Four strikeout for Hibbert. Well, Carco looks like he wants it in, and he gets it up and away, and Balboni just can't catch up with it. It is out of the strike zone. You can see by the swing right through it, so strikeout number four for Greg. No walks, and that's been a key for his success this year. No base on balls. Shot, base hit. Jumped on that first ball, fastball, Barfield. Well, that was a shot right there. He got it through that hole. Nobody could move quick enough to get in position to make that play. Wow. I'm just glad he didn't get it up. We are just getting ready to say before the pitch, there's a first ball fastball, as I'm more afraid of a guy with sacks, a man on second base and two outs in this kind of a ball game. Of course, Barfield is a guy you worry about when you're looking for the long one sure. against Tibber. Don't give up that single with two outs. Larry's that gum right. Get this guy and... Get back to work on offense. Laritz has bounced to short. And he's gone out to left. They made with two home runs last evening. Shot over the head of Scott Fletcher. Sammy gets to it as Barfield will hold it second. to back two out singles by Barfield and Leyritz. As you look at right-hander Barry Jones. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Mike Flowers. Well, he got that pitch up and out over the plate, and Leyritz just hammers it. Boy, that was a good swing he put on that pitch. So, first and second, two out. Sammy Ellis out to the mound. Just a word with Greg Hibbard. Put a pat on the shoulder there. Go get this guy. Big right out right here for Greg. No scoring today at Comiskey Park. Both pitchers have been a good groove. Two balls hit very hard off Greg Hibbard, though, in succession. Fortunately for the Sox, there's two outs. And the stumper looks on. Yes, fastball right there. Bowers has bounced to Ozzy and has bounced to Robin. Flowers 
looks like he's very susceptible at inside pass by the way he dives across. That's off the end of the bat in the center field. Johnson broke back now, comes on and makes the catch. Nothing across, a couple of hits, no errors, two men left. They'll go to the bottom of the seventh, no score. to Yvonne Calderon here in the bottom of the seventh inning. No score. Right on the outside corner on the 2-0 count. Boy, that's a Jim Dandy pitch right there by Andy Hawkins. 0-4-0 for the Yankees. 0-0-0 for the Sox. I don't know. Garen's moving move around so much over there. That pitch appeared to be about six inches outside. Devine in good shape right here. Three and one. See what they want to do when he's down in the... He wants it away again. Where he's sitting. Whoa. What a hack. Outstanding locations with that fastball today. He has really spotted this fastball well. Yeah, he's worked the hitters in and out very, very well. Kept that fastball up too, just out of the zone that the White Sox hitters like to hit at. Another fastball away. Where he's sitting. That's ball four. The lead. Okay, Garen looked like, to me, with presence, you can't see home plate, but it looks like he's sitting eight inches outside. Hits the target, and there's no way you can get that pitch. Third walk for Hawkins, and third base runner for the White Sox this afternoon. Come on, Danny. The only other two base runners coming back in the fifth inning with two out. So, obviously, the first time the Sox have had the leadoff man aboard. Pasqua has struck out, and he's popped to left. Ooh, he wants it away. Fastball away. Just get it down. Yeah. Fall right into our trap. <laughs> Waiting in the bushes. Calderon, 21 stolen bases. You know he wants to run. Pasqua takes the fastball over. Garen can throw you out. He has a strong arm, for the most part, an accurate arm. And a pretty quick release. Yeah, he's a better thrower than Matt Noakes. Coming with some more heat. It's just Pass out ball of, up. Yeah. It's just out of Danny Pasqua's zone. Danny is a much better hitter when he is taking that pitch. Because Hawkins got some pretty good velocity on it. There you see the flags. They're blowing straight in from center. What new? Hawkins a decent move for a right hander. Here, got to scratch and dig and kick and fight. Try to get one. One will be enough for him, Mr. Hibbert. Wow. <laughs> you know what? I know how I feel about pudding. it. I know that. That's off the plate. I'll tell you, outside of a healthy Teddy Hagira. You're talking about a left hander. I just soon have Greg Hibbert out there as anybody in this league. That's a pretty good compliment right there. Opponents have stolen 40 bases. 
49 bases and thrown out 40 times against the Yankee catchers this year and pitching. So they're pretty successful, the Yankees are, at throwing potential base stealers out. They want him to go over to first base again. If you've just joined us, you have missed a Lulu. From a pitching standpoint, it has been magnificent on both sides. That's high in the right center field. Now Barfield lost it, now recovers and makes a basket catch. Oh, he snow combed that one. Oh, it's tough out there in right field. You got to battle all, not only the sun, but that wind bringing the ball back in. And Jesse was able to adjust and readjust there and make the play. It could have been a brutal, critical play right there. There you see it. He just finds it. But there's one out now for Kitty. Oh, he's making good pitches on Casper. Makes some pretty good pitches on most of them this afternoon. As we mentioned, his locating of the fastball has just been as nice as we have seen from anyone all year. Kitty 0 for 2. He struck out and he popped the third. I see right here Calderon a little more intense on stealing second with one out. Yeah, you got to think about manufacturing a run, and that would be stealing a base and then getting a base hit. Way Hawkins is dealing. Tough to get three hits in a row to score a run today. saw the quick release right there by Hawkins. Hawkins really sped up his delivery right there, and that's when he has got to say, uh-uh, retreat, and right there, that's what really threw him out. It wasn't actually the pitch out. Boy, that, for all you young pitchers out there, is the way to do it. it is the way to do it as far as you see the little glide step is Kitty. Can't get it in the count one and two by Hawkins as far as execution, but Tom, he may have given away just a little bit, but still the point is you've got to unload in a hurry to home plate, and that was textbook by Andy Hawkins. And pull up right there. Goodbye. On the outside corner. Nothing across. They'll go to the top of the eighth inning. A scoreless tie. The White Sox hope to keep the Brewers at the bottom of the cake throughout the weekend as they host a three-game series live from Comiskey Park. Milwaukee, led by the newest brewmasters, Gary Sheffield and Dave Parker, has dropped two out of three games this season to the Sox. Can the Shy Sox maintain their dominance over the Brew Crew? Find out this Friday at 7 when the Sox take on the Brewers right here on Sports Channel. Of the eighth inning here at Comiskey Park. Scoreless tie and some replacement. Steve Lyons comes in to play first base for Ron Kittle here in the eighth inning, and the Sox are going to go with a new pitcher. Barry Jones will replace Greg Hibbard. There's the numbers on Barry, 9-1 and one with a 1-4-3 earned run average. 34th ball game this afternoon. One save for Barry. 32 hits, given up in 37 and two-thirds innings, 16 walks, 25 strikeouts. Barry Jones, the American League, hitting 235 against Barry so far this season. Greg Hibbard works seven very strong innings, gives up four hits, 
And that is it for Greg. He struck out four, didn't walk anybody, had another outstanding outing, but the best he can do, no decision. It was a hearty handshake. And a reminder, later on tonight, right here on Sports Channel, at Sports Nightly. Your source for the up-to-minute scores, highlights, and complete coverage of the fast-paced world of sports. Catch a recap of all the day's sports, including special sports features at Sports Nightly. Tonight, live at 6 and 9, exclusively on Sports Channel. Here's Bob Guerin. Slider strike. Oh, what a job by Greg Hibbert. Mercy. He does it day in and day out. That little bulldog yeah. is tough. Boy, once he gets his teeth into you, he ain't gonna mm -hmm. let go. No. <laughs> yes, boy, that's some gas there. <laughs> Just a bit tardy. Two. Oakland at Toronto, bottom of the eighth inning, tied at three. Garrett on the breaking ball, just got a piece of it trying to check his swing. Cincinnati at New York in the sixth inning, a rain delay. That game tied at one. Pittsburgh leading the Giants two to one in the fourth candlestick. Phillies came back to defeat the Astros at Veterans Stadium eight to four. Montreal beat Atlanta five to one at the Olympic Stadium. As that's out of play right side. Later on tonight, the Cardinals take on the Dodgers in Los Angeles. The Cubs at San Diego. Bottom of the first inning, Padres lead it one to nothing. That's going to be a foul ball. Harris <laughs> is struggling up there against BJ. Yeah, he's not seen the ball real good up there. No doubt about that, especially on the breaking ball. Staying alive, though. The more pitches you see, the better chance you have of getting to the pitcher. So he's hoping that actually uh, Barry Jones can throw one in his wheelhouse. I've said so many times here in the daytime, very tough to pick up the ball because of the background. If you got good stuff, you can win here at Comiskey. And the conditions this afternoon are absolutely perfect for the pitcher with the wind blowing in, the not so hot background behind you. Well, we saw that evidence by the towering shot off the bat of Sammy Sosa. I'll tell you one thing, Dale Scott's not hurting these pitchers either. Ventura guarding the line right where he should be. Long peg, and Lyons cannot dig it out. That'll be an error on Robin Ventura. Take a look at it right down the line here. Robin is in good shape. I don't know if he really gave it that good throw right there. Certainly a very pickable ball. Gonna give it. They're gonna give the air to the Lions. That's a definite. That's certainly a catchable ball right yeah, there. Yeah, but you can't give the air to Steve on that. It's gotta be on the throw. Meanwhile, they're gonna give it to Lions. So Espinoza, he'll be up there to bunt. There's no doubt about it. Ninth place hitter. Let's see how many times he's been successful five times this season, sacrifice bunting. If he doesn't lay down a good one, they're going to have a play on Garen at second. Yeah. I'm surprised right here. The Yankees are not. He's running for him. Yeah, that's true. Matt Noakes. Is the only other catcher available right now. But heck, in the eighth inning already, you got to go for it. 
That is true. Yeah, we got a situation for you up at Sky Dome. Oakland Southpaw Rick Honeycutt has come on. And the situation is this. No runs in, bases loaded, nobody out. Come on. I like that situation. by Garen. Ventura coming in. There's a bunt out in front of the mound. Oh, 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 get the job done. If Barry, if Barry is coming in hard, they got a good chance of getting Garen in second. Yeah, no doubt about it. Not a too particularly good of a bunt right there, but it was deadened. A little bit harder, and Jones would have had an easy play at second base. So sacrifice bunt number six for Espinosa and Scott Radinsky. Heating up in the bullpen. He'll come on, I'm sure, to pitch to Matting if he hits in this inning. But you've got to get these two guys, Roberto Kelly and Steve Sachs. They'll have chances to drive in this all-important run. Kelly over three. He struck out, bounced to short, and he's popped to first. Breaking ball low and away. Ball really running in on him. And the count evens at one. No runs, four hits for the Yankees. No runs, no hits for the Sox in the top of the eighth inning. And you see Figgy has joined Radinsky. Upper deck. And Jones on top. The ball and two strikes. with it. So Steve Stacks will have another RBI opportunity. It's easy for me to say. Steve Sacks, that is. We said it earlier, this is a guy we right-handed hitters. Of course, that was against Hibbert. He is a tough out. Breaking ball on the way. the side. Nothing across. There were no hits and there a man left after seven and a half. No score. There you see it. A scoreless tie in the Sox. Well, Andy Hawkins got himself a no-hitter going. A couple of plays that could have been a little different. Robin Ventura back in the first inning hit a shot into right field at Barfield. Race back, going away from home play, reached up and made the catch on. And then Sammy Sosa in the fifth inning with two men on. Hawkins had walked Carcavice and Fletcher. He hammered one, a towering fly ball in the left field. As Tom mentioned last night, it was definitely upper deck. And the wind brought it back in, and Lafritz caught it right against the fence. They indeed have changed that era. It's an era on Ventura.
Here's Kark. Breaking ball outside. On his pop to short. And he's walked. And Blowers playing even with the bag at third. They know Carco's an excellent drag bunner. Well, you want another situation up at Skydome? Yes. A sacrifice fly by Fred McGriff scored Tony Fernandez. One run in, men on first and second, one out. Blue Jays four, Athletics three. Ooh. A little delayed call by Dale Scott in the count one and two. Look where he's setting. Pops it up right side, Sacks. Hello, Scotty, take him out of here. Yeah. <laughs> He's flying to right and he's walked. Somebody's going to have to do something here quick. Of course, the White Sox pitchers have been up to the task. Matching Hawkins almost pitch for pitch. Yeah, in case you're looking to the Yankee night, Mattingly, Balboni, and Barfield scheduled hitters. Uh, Scotty takes a strike. Handed batter's box. I can't believe where he's setting up for some of these pitches that he wants. Whoa. Very definitive graphic in his moves. Yeah. If he hits the target, you have to dive to hit the ball. He's way out there again. Trying to snatch it. And the count two and two. The Yankees didn't get a base hit off Greg Hibbert. He had retired the first 16 Yankees in order. A base hit off him. Two infield singles in the sixth inning. Sex swing on the high heat. Nice catch as you look at the on deck hitter, Sammy Sosa. There's a breaking ball. Pops him up right side, Sacks. Once again, fighting that side. So with two outs here in the eighth, is up to Sammy. The fly to right, and we mentioned he just missed one back in the fifth inning. And this by far, the last five or six ball games is by far the most dangerous Sammy has been at the plate. Georgia, yes. Uh-huh. Now it feels straight away, spread out, breaking ball strike. Mm. Expando plate. Pitch down and away. That's tough to reach, that one. Again, wrong Dale man. Wrong. Jeez. Come on. I tell you, now right there, those last 
two pitches are impossible to hit. They're not. Come on. No one can hit those pitches. If you have to make a career hitting those, you'd hit zero. There he is farther out. Come on. One and two the count. I'll tell you, next, next time, Garen's going to set up in the on-deck circle. He's going to hit his target. There's a breaking ball again. It is. Flowers drops it, now picks it up, long throw, not in time. Credited with a base hit. Oh, they give him a hell man? Yeah. Breaking up the no hitter. It's a breaking ball hanging inside. You can see Blowers not really guarding the line right there. He, he can't get him a hit on that. Yeah. And he just let the ball eat him up right there. Really not as difficult a play as I thought. But watch this gun that Blowers has. My goodness, he got it there in a hurry. Just barely missing. They I want, it. I want Sammy to get the hit, but that's that's. There's Bob. He's, he's changed it now. It's an arrow. That's a correct call, Bob. As much as I want to see Sammy get that hit, you can't give him a hit on that. That's a flat boot. Yeah, he let that ball play him a bit. There's no question about that. He had a tremendous top spin on that ball. So run around. Let's see what Sammy's got in store for us. I got to think with Lance the hitter with two outs he's got to try and steal this base. Oh no Ozzy I'm sorry Ozzy's the hitter. Lance Johnson on deck. If he gets thrown out so what? You still have Ozzy and Lance to lead things off next inning. Go for it. Garen has shown us some outstanding throwing arm today. 13 for 23. Ozzy very unlikely today to be able to drive in that runner from first base right now with two out. So go for it. Well, they pitched down on Calderon. They're reading his anticipation. Situation. Garen is looking for the fastball away with Guillen. The number one, they're pitching it, playing him away, so you might as well pitch him that way too with the fastball. And of course, when you throw the fastball away, it really helps the catcher's chances of throwing out a fast base steal. Sammy Sosa. There it is again. It does, but he has been staying. He has. That has been his pitch today, the number one. He has spotted that pitch extremely well. In fact, he reminds me a little bit the way he's pitching this afternoon, the way Richard Dotson did back in 1983 for the Sox, spotting his fastball. Yeah. Not the same velocity. Dot threw the ball harder, but with more velocity. Yeah. You're right. There goes Sammy. Wow. He had a That's chance there. Play. Yeah, that would have been, I think Sammy would have made it. Yeah. Up and in fastball, too. Tough pitch to throw on for Garen. And probably in and out of the strike zone, too. Ozzy having a little bit of difficulty right now getting the head of the bat out like he was early on. Short, five to left, 0 for 2, 0 for 9 in this series. And a count of ball and two strikes. Oh, I'd like to see a gapper right yeah, now. I was right looking at the it. <laughs> yeah. Read my mail there, kid. <laughs> I was just looking right out there trying to mm. bisect Barfield oh, and Kelly. Oh, man. Room. A 
abundance. Man. Let Sammy get on his horse and run forever. Great job. Give him a chance. That's all they wanted. Come on, Hanky. <laughs> Come on, Squitter. Big horse, you. Earn your money. <laughs> Sosa is so much fun out there. He's cheerleading for Ozzy at second base, clapping his hands, wanting to get things going. He's checking those outfielders. Like he was described as a panther, just stalking back and forth. fourth inning. He's bounced to second in the sixth inning. And Wimpy, I think you're right. You called it. You knew it all the time. <laughs> well, all Lance has to do is get that big hit. They're playing them basically the same way they did Ozzy out in the outfield. Big gap between Barfield and Kelly. Now Kelly moves a little bit over towards straightaway center field. The Lance of Ruth. It's off the plate and count one and oh. Good speed aboard and Sosa and Guillen. Here comes Robin. 
they can give home plate umpire Dale Scott a piece of his mind or are they just going to talk the situation over with Andy he's got a no hitter going here in the bottom of the eighth inning Stump might be just trying to wait no he's not either or he's going to wait and come out there and give a little chit chat to Scott yeah I was thinking the same thing but no that's the wrong time to start getting on an umpire's case. Yeah, Bases right. loaded in a scoreless tie. Woo. Well, Robin Ventura. Robin's had a couple decent at bats. And a couple of good at bats. Yeah. Sammy at third, Ozzy at second, Lance at first. Field bunch swung around to the left. That's hitting the left field playable. Leritz fighting the wind. Jumps the ball! Jumps the ball! Everybody's going to score, and the Sox lead it three to nothing. Yes! break for the White Sox. Oh, my. Calderon takes it off the plate. Sox with three runs on no hits. Possibly something you don't see a whole bunch of. A no hitter thrown and you win the game. Yeah. Oh my. Well, the five walks didn't help Hawkins today. Well, I'll tell you, Leyritz, he just did not get the proper jump. That, the wind is really playing tricks out there. All right. How about this? Yes. Sox can move back into first place. Score just posted on the board. Blue Jays over the A's, four to three. This all started with two out on a great at bat by Sammy Sosa getting down in the count quickly. No 0 and 2. That's lifted in the right field. Jesse is there fighting that win. And the sun. Now he drops it. Robin scores and the Sox lead it four to nothing. Whoa. Well, the baseball gods are literally shining on the White Sox this afternoon. Mercy. That's what Andy Hawkins needs right now is a little mercy. He delivers the fastball up and away. Calderon hits what appears to be a routine fly to right. Here's Jesse Barfield battling the wind and the sun loses it. Bingo. E9s. White Sox lead it for zip. And Pasqua. Takes the strike. 
Hey, Hawk, do you remember when this inning started so harmlessly? The first two guys made routine outs. E5 set this whole thing up. A couple of walks and two more errors. Bingo. 0 2 count to Sammy right off the bat before he battled into the 2 2 count and then reached yeah. base on the arrow. Yep. Three errors this inning for the Yankees to go along with two walks and the Sox lead it for zip. No runs, four hits, three errors for the Yankees. Four runs, no hits, one error for the Sox. Side, Wimpy in defense of Lafritz and Barfield. Well, you've been out there, and I have been out there in this field on days like this when you just pray they didn't hit it to you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Just sit out there and pray they didn't hit it to you. Sun didn't win. Sun and win. That's off the plate on the count. Two and one. Jesse had a good beat on that ball. He was right there, and all of a sudden went right into that big ball of fire out there in the sky. No clouds to help you out today. And Leyritz, that ball just carried a little bit farther than it had been because everything had been coming back into the infield early in the ball game. That ball shot out there to left field pretty good, almost to the warning track. Two and two. Seems like the fans now are pulling for Hawkins to get the no-hitter because the Sox have the four to nothing lead. That's exactly right. How about this for a little bit of irony? How about the 80th birthday of Comiskey Park, the last time the New York Yankees will ever play a game here, seeing a no-hitter thrown in that game, and the Yankees lose it. <laughs> Game's full of irony, isn't it? That's why it's just the greatest game. <laughs> and the vulture has a chance. Vulture is he around again? <laughs> can you believe Barry Jones is around again? Ten and one. He's if here. They can hold on. Swooping down. He's going to swoop down, hopefully. Oh, mercy. Jammed and popped him up. That'll be caught by Espinosa. Makes the catch. And the side is retired, but not before the Sox come up with four runs, all of them earned, earned on oh, no hits, three errors, a man left. They'll go to the ninth inning, leading it, four zip with no hits. And in case you just tuned in, as we look at some defensive changes, Gallagher moves into left field in place of Pasqua. And a new pitcher, Scott Radinsky, coming in to face Mattingly. Here's the story in case you just joined us. The Sox coming up with four runs on no hits in the eighth inning to break the scoreless tie. Three errors committed by the Yankees. So the totals on the board for the Yankees, no runs on four hits, three errors. For the Sox, four runs on no hits and one error. Fastball strike. I was talking with Stump Merrill and Mark Connors and Mark Kill after the game last evening. The one guy they were just absolutely raving about in this ball club was that 22-year-old left-hander out there. I guess they tried everything they could to talk the Yankees into trying to get him and give them, give the Sox anything they wanted to get rid of. No Ridinsky. kidding. Yeah. Hit hard in the center field. Lance is there. Mattingly now 0 for 4. Himself a no hitter, and he's down four zip. Well, you don't think he's in the slump? Now he gets credit for a no hitter for this, right? You, eight you, innings. You got that right. Sure. Okay. 
just want to make sure. I'm sure there's some. Here's Balboni. Well, let me see. That. The last I know that Ken Johnson pitched a, a no hitter for Houston and was beaten one to nothing. Right. And it's happened several times in baseball's history. There's Balboni, the yeah. count one and one. The count one and two. Garfield having a problem on deck. Now it's all taken care of. Watch out. Off the facing. Kind of remains one and two. Well, it goes to show you when you get good pitching on your side and you make the plays defensively, anything can happen. Good grief. I still can't get over this. Jammed him, ate him up. Ventura bobbles it and cannot make the play. Well, the second arrow. Robin just flat let that ball play him right there. Yeah. It looked like he thought that ball was hit harder than it actually was. So Balboni gets first base. There's one out. Barfield will be the hitter. Let's look at the replay. He gets jammed with the fastball. Look at her. Instead of coming forward to meet it on the short hop, Robin waited back, something he hasn't done all year. Waited back, let the ball play him, and so he has his second error on the afternoon. So Wayne Tollison comes in to run for Balboni. Barfield, the hitter, he has one hit this afternoon, one for three, a solid single in the seventh inning. So one out, runner on. Jesse's bounced to short, struck out, and singles sharply to the left. Takes it low off the plate. Jesse Barfield. Andy Hawkins. There were four unearned runs on no hits in eight innings. Oh, just inside the count two and two. There's a bullet right in on the hands of Jesse. This could be it. Awesome. Fletcher, lock him up. And the ball game is over as the Sox get no hit by Andy Hawkins, and they win it four to nothing. Yes. Point of how well you pitch a no hitter and you lose it four to nothing, your feelings as you went into that eighth inning. Well, it was just a nothing nothing ball game. I don't know how long we'd be out there, and I just uh, wanted to hold them, give us a chance to win, you know, to win. And it's um, kind of ironic the way it turned out. It's a tough outfield out there right now. The wind's blowing in hard, and it's playing all kinds of tricks with the ball. And it's a tough play, a tough couple of plays out there, and and it didn't go our way, but the guys are giving their best, and we're all giving our best. We just didn't, just didn't work out. I could, the re I could read the, re the frustration in your body when you walked off the field. I know it's very tough, not have, not giving up a hit and walk off and know you're down four to nothing. Uh, I tell you what, it's, it's really tough to throw a no hitter and get beat. I don't know if too many instances where I've seen that happen, but uh, I threw well, and I feel good about my own performance today. We're doing okay. I think we're going to be all right. We just need to just keep our heads up and stay with it. The one ball that was hit hard, it looked like it was going to be a base hit, was the ball hit by Sammy Sosa in the fifth inning. The wind kept that ball in the ballpark. 
And that was really the only close. That was the closest thing to a base hit. Without a doubt, he got all that ball. Any other night, and any other night that we played here, and that ball's in the upper deck easy. So uh, the wind helped me out there, and it, it saved me three runs and a hit right away. You know, ironically, 80 years ago, this ballpark was open, and there was a no-hitter pitched in this ballpark, and the pitcher lost it. Is that right? Very ironic. It's a little history coming back to haunt you, isn't it? Yeah, I tell you, that's that's um, the way the year's going right now, and that's kind of par for the course, but you know, we're going to grind it out. We've got a long ways to go, and we can still make a success out of it. The way you've struggled the first part of the season, but the last four or five times out of the mound, you have pitched spectacular baseball. Even though the loss and uh, no hitter, et cetera, you've got to be very happy the way you've been pitching. Well, thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. It was kind of a struggle early, but I could have won my last four starts, I think, and I feel, I feel very confident about the way I'm throwing the ball right now. And the biggest thing is just to carry it over five days from now and keep it going. Well, I think you'd probably give up one base hit and take a win, wouldn't you? Without a doubt. <laughs> Go good. Good luck. Keep pissing the same way. Andy, uh, Andy Hawkins, a no hitter today, four to nothing, a loss, a very tough loss for him. <laughs> A very tough loss for the Yankees and a piece of history made here at Comiskey Park. All right, let's go back upstairs.